Ridwan is an apostate who is obsessed with trying to debunk Islam. He posted a video titled Islam is peaceful debunked in one minute. He's going to try to prove to us that Islam is not a peaceful religion. I'm curious to hear what he has to say. So without wasting any time, let's watch the clips and come back. You might have heard that Islam is a peaceful and tolerant religion. That is not true. Here are five reasons why Islam is not peaceful, but rather a religion of war and intolerance. He is assuming that war and intolerance are in contradiction with peace. Being intolerant to bad ideologies is something praiseworthy and brings peace to the society. For example, being intolerant to the cake and not allowing their ideology to spread in our societies is something good and brings peace. And war can also be praiseworthy and a means to bring peace. Waging war against an occupation is good and a means to bring peace. So from the jump, Rizvan is using false promises in his arguments. And again, what do you expect from someone who rejects Islam? And speaking about war, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth and the king of kings, bring justice to my brothers and sisters in Palestine and give them great victory against their enemies. Say Amin. Number one, Islam has a very bloody history. It spread mostly through wars and it is contrary to popular belief, the only major religion that mostly established itself by wars. Brothers and sisters, the Crusades never happened and the Saxon wars were just fiction. It's only Islam and Muslims who wages wars. Subhanallah, how can I take anything you say seriously when you make such nonsensical claims? You stupid. Emperor Charlemagne, who was the king of the Franks, waged many wars against the Saxons for being pagans. And this is just one of his royal decrees towards them. If anyone of the race of the Saxons hereafter concede among them shall have wished to hide himself and baptized and shall have scorn to come to baptism and shall have wished to remain a pagan let him be punished by death there is nothing in islam like this we were never commanded to force people to accept islam even church father augustine of hippo who was a first century bishop in his letter number 93 to vincentius he says you are of the opinion that no one should be compelled to follow righteousness and yet you read that the householder said to his servants whomsoever you shall find Compel them to come in. Luke 14 verse 23. You also read how he who was at first Saul and afterwards Paul was compelled by the great violence with which Christ coerced him to know and to embrace the truth. For you cannot but think that the light which your eyes enjoy is more precious to man than money or any other possession. In this letter Augustine was making a case for the permissibility of forcing the Donatists who were a Christian sect in North Africa to follow his version of Christianity. Christian orthodoxy and he based his argument on the Bible Luke 14 verse 22 to 23 sir the servant said what you ordered has been done but there is still room then the master told his servant go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full this verse is evidence that the Bible allows for forced conversion to Christianity but in Islam it is up to us to convey the message but not to force the people there shall be no compulsion in acceptance of the religion. The right course has become distinct from the wrong. So whoever disbelieves in Taghut and believes in Allah has grabbed the most trustworthy handhold with no break in it. And Allah is hearing and knowing. There is a difference between conquering a land and forcing the people of the land to convert. We do not force people to convert. Therefore, Islam as a religion was not spread by the sword. But the Islamic empire did expand. And of course, the expansion was by sword. Do you think wars were were fought with spoons. The Islamic empires were spread by the sword like any other empire that ever existed. But the religion of Islam was not spread by the sword since the people of the land that were conquered were not forced to convert. And the existence of 10 million Egyptian Christians is proof of this fact. Number two, the Quran says in chapter 9 verse 29 to fight those who don't believe in Allah and in Muhammad. This is what happens when you cherry pick a verse and ignore the entirety of the Quran. Let's read the verse first. Fight against those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day and who do not consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger have made unlawful and who do not adopt the religion of truth, i.e. Islam, from those who were given the scripture. Fight until they give the zakat unwillingly while they are humbled. First of all, this verse was revealed because the Byzantines or Romans were preparing an attack on the Muslims. 
So of course we're going to defend ourselves and our land and pay attention to this key point. If we Muslims were commanded to force people to convert, the jizya wouldn't be a thing. Non-Muslims have a choice, either convert or revert to Islam and pay the zakat or stay as you are, don't accept Islam and pay the jizya. Either way you are paying Muslim or non-Muslim. And by following this command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Muslims were able to stop the Roman invasion of the Muslim lands and bring peace and protection to the people of the region. Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of your religion and do not expel you from your homes, from being righteous toward them and acting justly toward them. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. This verse is clear-cut proof that we Muslims are not allowed to oppress non-Muslims just because they are non-Muslims. Number three, the Quran refers in many parts, including in chapter 8 verse 55, to non-Muslims as the worst of creatures. What has this verse to do with being peaceful or not? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of everything, including the disbelievers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the right to describe his own creation the way he wants and not the way you want. You stupid. Let's read the verse for ourselves. Indeed, the worst of living creatures in the sight of Allah are those who have disbelieved and they will not ever believe. But this verse doesn't stop here. Let's continue reading to get the full picture. The ones with whom you made a treaty, but then they they break their pledge every time and they do not fear Allah. As you can see the verse when read in context speaks about those disbelievers who broke the treaty and their pledge. According to Tafsir Sa'di, those disbelievers combine these three qualities, disbelief, lack of faith and betrayal. Again nothing about this verse is against peace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creation, who are you to come in between? You stupid. Number four, Islam commands the killing of ex-Muslims like myself. And we are proud of all the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For us Muslims, apostasy is the highest form of treason. According to the United States Code of Law, Title 18, Part 1, Chapter 115, Code 2381 for treason. Whoever owing allegiance to the United States, levies war against them or adheres to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort within the United States or elsewhere, is guilty of treason and shall suffer death, or shall be imprisoned not less than five years and fined under this title but not less than $10,000, and shall be incapable of holding any office under the United States. If treason to the United States can be punished by death, then what about being an open enemy to Allah our creator and rejecting his command? Is there any treason more than the rejection of the laws of the king of kings? And these commands assure the peace in the land and limit the propagation of corruption and immorality. For example, you as an atheist have no problem with incest. No, I have never said that. You said that fuck. Yeah. You think incest is okay? I, right? have, I, have, I have never said that. Are you sure about that? So if two sisters or if two brothers have incest sexual relationship, there's nothing, I, I can't see anything wrong with it, right? Well, there is uh, actually nothing wrong with it. I have never said that. I have, I, have, I have never said that. If a brother and sister, if they absolutely make sure that they don't have kids, then there's also nothing wrong with it. Well, yeah. I have, I have I have never said that. Tell me what's wrong with it. I can't think of anything. Why, 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 people are like, oh, it's gross. Well, then don't do it. Yeah, object right? objectively there is nothing uh, wrong with it. I have I have I have never said that. Objectively there is nothing uh, wrong with it. I have, I have I have never said that. Objectively there is nothing uh, wrong with it. I have never said that. I have I have I have never said that. You stupid. Inshallah, we will never allow in our Muslim countries this act of immorality. That's why I always say, according to atheism, there is no difference between this. And this, you believe it is just rearrangement of molecules. And number five, Islam also has deadly seven sins. And one of them is running from the battlefield. All he just said has nothing to do with peace. Running from a battlefield? Okay, let's read what your American code of law says about desertion. U.S. Code Title 10, Subtitle A, Part 2, Chapter 47, Subchapter 10, Code Number 885. Any person found guilty of desertion or attempt to desert shall be punished if the offense is committed in time of war, by death, or such other punishment as a court-martial may direct. But if the desertion or attempt to desert occur 
force at any other time by such punishment other than death as a court martial may direct. If you have a problem with the punishment by death for running away from battle and desertion, then you have a problem with your own country. And I'm sure every single country in the world agrees with the same laws of desertion. I don't understand how a person can claim to be an atheist and keep using moral arguments against Islam and religion. Go find your source of morality, then come and judge Islam with it. Until then you are without moral objectivity and have no legs to stand on when it comes to morality. So if two sisters or if two brothers have incest sexual relationship, there's nothing, I, I can't see anything wrong with it, right? Well, there is uh, actually nothing wrong with it. You stupid. Alhamdulillah for the blessing of Islam. I hope you benefited from this video. You can also watch this video about a Christian claiming to be an ex-Muslim saying that the Quran has a mistake. And don't forget to subscribe for daily uploads. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum.